this video we are going to work example 1.1. This is an example in which you're presented with a description of a motion and then you need to make a graph uh, that represents that motion. So the example reads this way. I am standing at the end of my straight driveway and then begin walking in the positive x direction towards my mailbox which is 30 meters away. Halfway there I turn back to get the mailbox key but then I realize I have the key in my pocket, turn around again, stopping at the mailbox 50 seconds after I started walking. And then you're supposed to graph the position versus time. So why don't we start off by drawing a picture uh, that represents the situation. So here's a straight line that represents the straight driveway. Here's where we're going to get started walking at x equals zero meters. And so here is our walking person. And then uh, out here is where the mailbox is at x equals 30 meters. And uh, I'll draw a little mailbox. And, uh, and then what happens is the person walks, gets about halfway there, so here's the halfway point at x equals 15 meters. Uh, they walk in that direction, turn around about halfway, and then turn around again, and then they finally come to a stop at the mailbox. So uh, there's a picture that shows what's going on, and now what we have to do is turn this into a graph. So we need a set of axes on which we're going to make our graph, so let's draw those axes. I'll draw a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. The horizontal axis is going to be time. We're supposed to graph uh, position x versus time t. So this would be time t, and time t is going to be represented in seconds. And then on the vertical axis, that's going to represent position x, and that's going to be in units of meters. So we can say that this origin down here represents time zero and a position of zero, and that's going to be a point on our graph. We start walking when time equals zero, and our position is zero at that time. Another point that we know is going to be on the graph is going to occur when we reach the mailbox, and that's going to occur at time uh, 50 seconds. And when we get to 50 seconds in time, we'll reach the mailbox, which is 30 meters away. So that's going to be a point on our graph. Now the question is, what happens in between? And so I'm going to draw one answer here. It turns out there are a lot of answers that could be correct, um, and uh, this is one of them. So the person starts off walking this way, and then they get about halfway there, and they turn around, and then they turn around again and keep walking, and then finally reach the mailbox. Okay, so I'll also mark the halfway point on the x uh, position axis up here as 15 meters. Now there are a couple of features on this graph that I want to draw your attention to that should appear in your answer. One of those features is what happens at the start. So at the very start down here there's a particular shape to the graph and I'm going to try to reproduce that up here. So this is a kind of a zoomed in version of the very start of the graph at time equals zero. So I drew it like this. And what this uh, shape is meant to represent is that the person who's doing the walking is starting from rest, that they're standing at the start. And that's illustrated here because the velocity is zero, and that's indicated by the slope of the position versus time graph. So at the very start, the velocity is equal to zero, and then a little while later, the velocity is not zero anymore. The slope has increased to a positive slope, and that means that the velocity is positive. So this represents somebody starting from rest and speeding up. If I had drawn the position versus time graph at the beginning looking something like this, well then the, the velocity at the start would not be zero because the curve is not flat at the start. So this would represent really a running start and that's not what's described in the problem. The other point I want to draw your attention to is at the end um, and something similar is happening there except in reverse. So at the end, we see a shape that looks like this. And this is an indication of uh, somebody who is coming to rest, somebody who is coming to a stop, which is what is specified in the problem. So just before they reach the end, I'm drawing the tangent to the curve here. We have a velocity that is positive. In other words, they're headed towards the mailbox. But then that slope gets less and less until at the very end, 
the slope is equal to uh, zero. So again, this is a representation on a position versus time graph of somebody coming to a stop. If I had drawn the position versus time graph at the end as being something like this, then what would be happening there is I'd be going from a positive velocity to a zero velocity in an instant at that point. That would be like stopping on a dime. And that's not really how people move. So to be really correct, you'd have to make sure that you have a gradual change in the velocity uh, until a velocity of zero is attained. And then the other points that, of course, are important are the turns. At first, we're moving towards the mailbox with a velocity that's positive. Then when we turn around, even just for an instant, our velocity is going to be equal to zero. And then uh, we're headed back towards the start, and there the velocity is going to be uh, less than zero. Then we turn again, so our velocity is going to be zero again. So I'm indicating that with a slope that is uh, flat or a zero slope. And then as we're headed back towards the mailbox, again, we have a positive velocity. So whenever we're moving towards the mailbox, we have a positive velocity. Whenever we're moving away from the mailbox, we have a negative velocity. And just at the instant when our velocity is switching from positive to negative or negative to positive, we have zero velocity. So uh, that is how we solve example 1.1.